I thought it would be fun to wear my NASA flannel today since we're going to be talking about the Space Launch System, or NASA's new moon rocket. In this video, we'll go over the history of SLS, or the Space Launch System, some of the designs and the expectations for the future. So let's talk about that. To get started with this video, I want to mention that there are many different opinions about the Space Launch System, and much later at the end of this video, I will briefly touch base on some of these controversies. But I want to primarily focus this video on discussing the history of the vehicle, what the rocket is actually capable of, and what the future is going to hold. So with that being said, let's start with the history of the Space Launch System, or SLS. Now to understand where this rocket even comes from, we need to go all the way back to the early 2000s. Around this time frame, NASA's human spaceflight program was primarily composed of the space shuttle. Now after the Columbia disaster, NASA was assessing how reliable or how safe the space shuttle actually was. And because of this and the development of the International Space Station, they ultimately decided that the space shuttle will need to be retired in 2010 or 2011, which is what ended up happening. However, in the early 2000s, NASA needed to start to decide what was going to be the future of human spaceflight after the space shuttle ended. So in the year 2004, a new program was announced called the Constellation Program. The main goal of the Constellation Program was to continue human spaceflight after the end of the shuttle program. So ultimately what this led to, or what the goals were, were to first be able to send astronauts to low Earth orbit and back to the International Space Station. Secondly, to send astronauts back to the moon and to land them safely on the surface of the moon. And lastly, to go further than the orbit of the moon, whether going to asteroids or eventually Mars. So Constellation, which again began in 2004, was trying to reach astronauts back to the moon and onwards to Mars with the ultimate goal of landing astronauts back on the surface of the moon by the year 2020. Now, spoiler alert, we know that that doesn't happen. So what actually happens with the Constellation Program? In order to figure out what actually happens to the Constellation Program, we need to know a little bit more about it. First of all, there's the Ares-1 rocket. Now, I won't go into too much detail of the design, but the first stage was built off of the design for the Space Shuttle Solid Rocket Boosters. So the two side boosters that would launch on the space shuttle, that is what essentially was used for the first stage for the Ares-1. While the second stage was built off the design of the space shuttle external tank, or the giant orange tank. And then lastly, there would be a crew capsule that was on top of the entire rocket. And the development of that capsule was called Orion. And that might sound familiar, and we'll get back to that in a little bit. Now, Ares-1 would have multiple configurations or designs that would be able to change depending on when we wanted to send astronauts to low Earth orbit versus when we wanted to send them all the way to the moon or beyond. So that's something to keep in mind is that Ares-1 was essentially going to have many different configurations that could reach different goals. Now, there was actually a test launch of the Ares-1 back in 2009. However, there were also many studies about the launch vehicle itself and many challenges. Due to vibrational issues, using a solid rocket motor as the first stage and the pure power coming from this vehicle, there is a lot of analysis regarding the safety for a crewed launch or with people on board. Some estimates said that it would be almost impossible to abort during launch or during the early phases of launch if something were to go wrong with the main motor. Additionally, the challenges with the vibrations occurring during this launch phase would take a very long time for NASA to actually design the rocket to be safe to launch people, because people are fairly fragile. Therefore, it was estimated that Ares-1 wouldn't actually launch crew into at least 2017 or 2019, and this was back in the 2000s when this was estimated. So it could have been much longer than that even still. But it's important to note that the Constellation program also included another rocket called Ares-5. Now, Ares-5 was essentially the cargo counterpart to Ares-1. Instead of launching the crew, it would launch everything else that we needed depending on where we went. So if we were going to go to the moon, 
Ares 5 would be responsible for launching the lunar lander, and the Ares 1 or Orion capsule would then rendezvous with the lander in lunar orbit. So essentially, the Constellation program included two different rocket designs with two different focuses, one for crew and one for cargo. By looking at some of the designs for Ares 5, we can see that it too is built off of some of the same concepts from the space shuttle, having similar solid rocket boosters on the side, a fuel tank that looks like the external fuel tank from the space shuttle, and it's also able to send more mass to orbit around the moon than this Saturn V was capable of, which the Saturn V being the rocket that the Apollo astronauts used to get to the moon. So it's pretty interesting to note the design for Ares 1 and Ares 5 being built off of what the space shuttle or the technology that the space shuttle program had developed. But as I mentioned before, the Constellation program not only including missions to the moon and potentially Mars, but also visiting asteroids, which have been an awesome thing to see. You may have noticed that I mentioned the Orion capsule when discussing the Ares 1, and that actually is the same Orion capsule that's being developed and used today. Starting around the mid-2000s, NASA was focusing on developing a new, safe, and reliable crew capsule. This is because many studies were ran after the Challenger and Columbia disasters, trying to assess how safe a vehicle truly is, and having the capability to abort during launch, as well as re-enter safely, is critical to the safety of the astronauts. Therefore, they knew that in their next missions or their next crewed capsules, or essentially next designs for spacefaring vehicles, they would want it to be as safe as possible for those on board. Therefore, going back to the crew capsule design of what was done in the 60s and 70s was seen to be more safer from a launch perspective. And even now, looking at the rockets that are developed today, as well as the private companies that are developing crew capsules, those two are mimicking much closer to what we saw during the 60s and 70s than that of the space shuttle. But there's still many developments and improvements that could be made. In fact, some estimates even said that the Orion capsule is going to be 10 times safer than the space shuttle was during re-entry into the atmosphere. And that might be some of the reasons why the designs we see today appear closer to what we saw during the Apollo program than during the shuttle program. However, some of the technology from the shuttle program is still being used, and we'll talk about that. But wait a minute, you clicked on a video about the space launch system, and I've been talking about Constellation for a few minutes. So where are those connected? Well, we're actually almost there. Because in the year 2009 and getting into 2010, there was a lot of analysis looking back at what Constellation really needed to achieve. They were developing two rockets, one which would launch crew, another which would be essentially the size of the Saturn V, would ultimately try and send astronauts back to the surface of the moon and beyond. Now, from a financial standpoint, this looked very expensive for NASA to develop two of these rockets. Therefore, in the year 2010, the Constellation program was canceled. This was a very hard time for NASA, because not only was their new human spaceflight program Constellation canceled, but also the space shuttle program was retiring the next year. Therefore, a lot of future human spaceflight looked like it was ending in 2011 without an idea in when it would come back. Now, I should also mention that the commercial human program, or essentially starting to develop commercial entities that could launch uh, crewed spacecraft, was something that was currently in development and in the early stages. But in terms of NASA designing and building a rocket to send crew, this was something that was unclear. But I should mention that Constellation wasn't completely canceled. It was more so rearranged or parts of it were combined to create something that we now know today, and as you can probably guess, as the space launch system. So, how exactly did that work? In the NASA Authorization Bill of 2010, Congress stated that NASA would need to develop the space launch system to send astronauts further than low Earth orbit, essentially aiming to go back to the moon. Now, there were some interesting statements within this bill regarding the design of the rocket, because it would have to leverage some of the design and techniques that were used for the space shuttle program. Now, more specifically, the bill stated that the space launch system must utilize to the practical extent 
the space shuttle derived propulsion systems, including engines, external tank, and solid rocket motors. Which ultimately means that the space launch system, even before many of the designs came about within NASA, would have to leverage the technology used by the space shuttle, even including its engines. So even though the Ares-1 and Ares-5 vehicles were being designed for a few years and planning to use some of the technology from the space shuttle program, the space launch system directly comes out of one of these bills enacted by Congress, even explicitly stating or heavily suggesting the technology that would be used for this rocket. I'll get back to this a little bit later in the video, but that's just something to keep in mind in terms of where the space launch system actually originates. So as of 2010, SLS or the Space Launch System had begun, and 2011 some of the early designs were developed where the Orion capsule, which actually survived through the end of the Constellation program, would be the primary payload for SLS. So now that we've talked a lot about the history of the Space Launch System, let's go into some of the details about the actual rocket. It is a super heavy lift rocket standing at 98 meters or 322 feet tall. The rocket is capable of taking 94,800 kilograms to low Earth orbit, which is pretty impressive. The first stage has two solid rocket motors and four RS-25 engines, or the same engines that were on the space shuttle. The vehicle uses liquid hydrogen and oxygen as its fuel. The space launch system has multiple designs or configurations that will be used into the future, starting with the Block 1, followed by Block 1B and Block 2. Essentially, as more space launch systems or SLS rockets are launched, small changes will be made to the design. The Block 1 includes the Interim Chirogenic Propulsion System, or ICPS. Now, the Block 1 configuration is only going to be used for the first three launches of SLS. After that, the Exploration Upper Stage will be implemented, which is essentially the Block 1B configuration. And then finally, after a few more launches of that, is when the Block 2 will occur, which is an updated design of the solid rocket motors, which are on the first stage. So I know that's a lot to keep in mind, but essentially as SLS continues to launch or further designs are used, the vehicle is slowly going to be improving its design or its lifting capabilities. The prime contractors for the space launch system to help NASA are the United Launch Alliance, Aerojet Rocketdyne, Northrop Grumman, and Boeing, whereas the main contractor for the Orion capsule is Lockheed Martin. Now that we are familiar with the space launch system, as well as where it originates in history, we can start to talk about what it's actually going to do. Now, the space launch system is one of the main rockets that will be used for the Artemis program. Now, the Artemis program is NASA's main human spaceflight program to return astronauts to the surface of the moon by 2025 and create a sustainable environment around the lunar region during the next decade or so, which means sustainable, trying to send people back and be able to go back and forth, similar to what we did for the International Space Station. Now, I could spend many videos going into the detail of the Artemis programs, the future Artemis missions, but for the sake of this video, I will give a very brief overview of the first three Artemis missions. The first mission being Artemis 1 will launch the Orion capsule for the first time in orbit around the moon and then return back to the Earth. Now, there aren't going to be any crew or astronauts on board, but this essentially is a test mission to see how well the SLS performs in flight as well as the Orion capsule. And there are some small satellites that are included with the mission to launch alongside Orion. However, the primary focus is to see whether or not Orion and SLS operate as expected. Now the second mission, which is Artemis II, can be closely related to what Apollo 8 did. In this case, this will also be the first launch on SLS and Orion with crew on board, and they will go orbit around the moon and come back to Earth. Again, similar to Apollo 8, where they didn't land on the surface, but rather went to cislunar space or the lunar region and returned back to Earth. And then lastly, Artemis 3, which is scheduled to happen in 2025, expects to land astronauts on the surface of the moon with the help of the HLS or human landing system. Meaning that the space launch system will launch Orion, Orion will rendezvous with a lunar lander in orbit around the moon, and then the lunar lander will land on the moon, the astronauts will get to the surface, they'll go back to Orion and bring them back to Earth. 
Therefore, that's the overview of the first three Artemis missions that are expected for the Space Launch System. Now you might have another question. SLS is just a rocket. Could it also launch other things? And the answer is yes. Originally, the Space Launch System was supposed to also launch the Europa Clipper mission. However, due to some of the later timelines and the rate at which an SLS is built, it was actually moved to a Falcon Heavy, and that also heavily saved on the cost for Europa Clipper. But we'll talk about that in just a little bit. There have also been many other proposals to use the Space Launch System, as since it is such a powerful vehicle, it's able to send missions to deep space and maybe even enter orbit around some of the most outermost planets, including Neptune and Uranus, which is something that could be seen for the future. However, as of right now, the main focus for the Space Launch System is the Artemis program. But one of the reasons I was inspired to make this video is because the Space Launch System, or the SLS, has just recently left the Vehicle Assembly Building and made its way to the launch pad. It's not going to launch yet, in fact it's getting ready for a wet dress rehearsal, which essentially is where they start to put fuel into the rocket to make sure that everything is operating as expected. It will actually then be moved back to the VAB for the launch that is expected in the next few months. However, the wet dress rehearsal will be happening in the next week or so, so that's something to look forward to, to see whether or not it will actually remain on schedule. Many people are excited and looking forward to the launch of SLS, and this is because it will be the largest rocket to launch since the Apollo program that happened in the 70s. This is truly a massive vehicle, even if it doesn't have people on board, it will be exciting to see witness or see happen. Now I should mention that it's the largest rocket because the Starship rocket hasn't necessarily launched yet, but who knows which one will happen first. That's just something to keep in mind as the next few months progress. But really briefly, I want to go into some of the criticisms regarding SLS. If you want to discuss it in the comments, feel free, but please be civil about it. Uh, but ultimately, there are some main components, including the fact that it is an expensive rocket, it is expendable, it is late as well, not necessarily competitive. Um, and those kind of tie into one another. Uh, late because originally it was supposed to launch in 2016, then 2017, then 2018, 2019, now it's 2022 and it hasn't launched yet, but fingers crossed that it launches in a couple months. Um, in terms of expensive, it is really expensive to develop a rocket that will send humans to orbit around the moon and seeing the comparison with SpaceX and what they've been capable of, hopefully in the future there will be a really immense cooperation between the Artemis program and what SpaceX is achieving. Um, but for the time being, SLS is going to be a vehicle that is effective in sending astronauts to lunar orbit. Um, Non-competitive nature, going back to what we talked about with some of those early bills going from the Constellation program to SLS, requiring some of the design of the space shuttle. And lastly, the expendable component. Again, the space launch system is not reusable. It will not be landing on a barge in the middle of the ocean. Uh, therefore, every time we want to launch, astronauts will need to develop an entirely new rocket, uh, which will be expensive and does have a high cost going into the future. However, there are many positive components regarding the space launch system. And I personally am looking forward to seeing all the Artemis launches that are coming in the near future and the next astronauts to step foot on the surface of the moon. To see that happen in the 21st century will be truly exciting with the technology that has recently been developed. So with all that being said, if you have any questions about the space launch system, feel free to let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like and subscribing to this channel. But thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.